911, do you have an emergency? Today on Rescue 911, Plus. The last 17 years of police work, I've never seen any survivors from carbon monoxide. Paramedics fight to keep an entire family alive on Rescue 911. For one family in Prairie Village, Kansas, being viewers of Rescue 911 brought them an unexpected advantage early on the morning of November 11th, 1993. 16-year-old Justin White was the first family member to wake up that morning. What happened to the family frustrates me a lot because it could have been very easily prevented. We generally had that attitude, you know, it can't happen to us, but it did. Come on, Brand, let's go. Time to get up and go to school. Come on, Brand, move your butt. And I went in to wake my brother up. Come on, let's go. I'm running late and I ain't got time for your games. Let's go. Let's get your butt out of bed. He didn't want to wake up. He was acting like he was real sick. I got to get up. And I thought he was faking it just to get out of school that day because it was miserable outside. He was kind of crying, and then he collapsed onto the That's floor. Mom? Their Mom? parents, Kim and Don Brooks, were asleep just down the hall. It was really hard to get awake that morning, but I heard a commotion in the hallway, so I finally talked myself out of bed. He looked like he had the flu. There's a big flu bug going around the city. What's wrong, bud? Brandon. I said, come on, why don't you get up? And he said, I can't. I can't move. I'm paralyzed. Hey, Don. What? Panic kicked in. And they're thinking about putting him back asleep. What's going on? Kim. Kim? Kim? Jeez. Once my mom collapsed, my dad said it clicked into his head that it was carbon monoxide poisoning. And get them he said, get them out of the house. Fire and ambulance, where do you need us? 7843. 7843. What's the problem there? Carbon monoxide. It's in the house. My wife went down and my son went Is, down. Are they awake? Yes, I got them awake and I got them outside. Okay. Johnson County Dispatcher Darlene Walker took the call. A small quantity of carbon monoxide can be lethal. He was in danger the longer he stayed inside. Most people that die from carbon monoxide poisoning die in their sleep. Stay outside of the house. We've got the fire department and an ambulance okay, on the way. Gotta go, my blind yeah, get out there. Right. The biggest fear I had when I got this call, would they still be awake when he got back out there? 1144-223-1104. Rescue monoxide. units were immediately dispatched. Prairie Village Police Corporal Steve Hunter was nearest to the scene. We received a call from the dispatcher that there was a carbon monoxide poisoning at number 38's address, which is uh, Sergeant Brooks's badge number. Ed? Ed? He became unconscious at that time. Shannon, come. Come here, girl. Come here. And they were very pale, very blue looking. They weren't moving any. I thought they were dead. You think the worst, but the four victims at the house. And I knew that it was a very bad scene. Don. Don. The carbon monoxide was so strong there at the front door that I went in probably 15 seconds or less and immediately received a headache. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? The last 17 years of police work, I've never seen any survivors from uh, carbon monoxide. Among those who responded was Med Act Ambulance Paramedic John Linville. The main symptoms of carbon monoxide, the early symptoms are ringing in the ears, maybe some visual difficulties, nausea, vomiting, a throbbing headache. An engine company from Fire District Number 2 arrived, led by Lieutenant John Allen. I bunked up 
put on my air pack and my carbon monoxide monitor. My firefighter just at the front door had a reading of 200 parts per million. Right then, those people are really in danger. And in the back rooms, where the air hadn't really had a chance to naturally ventilate, our reading went as high as 300 parts per million. At St. Joseph Health Center, all four members of the Brooks family were treated by emergency physician Mike Riley. We measured their carbon monoxide levels. The father's was the highest at 26 percent. Mother's was second, around 20 percent. And both boys measured at 19 percent. The normal concentration of carbon monoxide in the blood is closer to 1 to 2 percent. The doctor told us if we'd been in the house 10 more minutes, we'd be dead. The Tuesday before this happened, we'd been watching an episode of Rescue 911. And they had a segment on a uh, carbon monoxide poisoning. And for some reason, and, and to this day, I still don't understand why, but that is the first thing that popped into my head. If we hadn't seen the episode of 911, I would have picked them up and put them back in bed thinking it was the flu. And had I done that, we would have died. Ten months have passed. The Brooks family is still suffering long-term side effects from their carbon monoxide poisoning. The boys are having problems with thought process working in school. Don's been put on what they call light duty right now at the police department. I would call him, as they would say, best of the best. He always wanted to be there. He always wanted to be in the middle of everything. Um, and and he's, he's just not that way anymore. Johnson Johnson and Rayfield. They've likened what happened to me to having a mild stroke. I've never worn glasses before in my life. It affected my speech, memory loss. My guys at the privileged police department. It was a very strange feeling that I would be the one that they had to come to instead of me being the one having to go to somebody. Brandon was really afraid. He kept saying, I thought they were dead. I thought my parents had died. And it wasn't until I read his letter that I realized really how much um, they were upset. A subsequent investigation determined that the buildup of carbon monoxide was caused by improper furnace venting. Carbon monoxide is a killer. It creeps into your house and it creeps into your body and you don't even know what's there. I think everybody should have a carbon monoxide detector in their home. My day that morning saved the whole family, which was the biggest satisfaction, I think, of any award he's ever gotten. He received none for this one, but it was more satisfying than anything he's ever done in his life. Next, step inside the command center where the calls for help are answered and meet the real-life heroes who save lives. Stay tuned for another episode of Rescue 911. Next on Discovery Health Channel, real life, medicine, miracles. Mr. Shapiro, step out of the car, please.